Welcome. I'm Steve Hammack from Honeywell's Flight Technical Services Group. Today we're going to take a peek into the 3D volumetric buffer of Honeywell's RDR 4000 and RDR 7000 in a view weather radar systems. We'll start with a quick review of what information goes into the buffer. But first, what is a buffer? A buffer is just a storage area for information. We store the information the radar collects in a memory organized in three dimensions, latitude, longitude, and altitude. For each location in 3D buffer, we store associated information like range, reflectivity, turbulence, and if the returns came from weather or ground. The system automatically and continuously scans and collects weather and ground returns from the nose of the aircraft out to 320 nautical miles and from the ground to 60,000 feet. For scans above the freezing level, the system automatically increases the gain to make less reflective frozen storm tops more visible. The scanned information is stored in the 3D volumetric buffer and is continuously updated and compensated for aircraft movement. The data is also corrected for the Earth's curvature, so the altitudes displayed by the system are true MSL altitudes. If left uncorrected, the effect of the Earth's curvature can be quite significant. In the picture shown, the aircraft is at flight level 250. However, because of the Earth's curvature, the center of the beam is above 27,000 feet at 60 nautical miles, almost 37,000 feet at 120 nautical miles, and 44,000 feet at 150 nautical miles. The automatic scanning stores all the weather and ground return information in the 3D buffer memory. The system also contains an internal worldwide terrain database that is a version of our EGPWS database but without airports, runways, and obstacles. Because the system uses only the terrain information, regularly scheduled updates are not required. The terrain database allows the radar to distinguish between weather and ground returns. We can then display only weather information in the weather mode and only ground returns in the ground map mode. In the ground map mode, the ground returns are provided by the radar returns and not the internal terrain database. This allows for an independent verification of position. Other information put into the 3D buffer includes enhanced turbulence data. Turbulence data is provided out to 40 or 60 nautical miles for any range selection depending on the system. The new enhanced turbulence detection provides more sensitive and accurate turbulence information with fewer false alerts and improved correlation to predicted aircraft g-forces. It is up to 12 times more sensitive than current systems. We now have a complete picture of the environment ahead of the aircraft and can analyze the information in the buffer to detect wind shear, turbulence, provide cell growth, movement, and attenuation information, and to predict areas containing hail and lightning. Since there is no tilt control, the pilot is not using the control panel to control the radar, but rather using it to request information from the 3D buffer. This is what allows our system to provide pilots with independent selections of range, mode, gain, and altitude slices. This information can be presented in many ways, including comparing the buffer data to the aircraft's flight path and displaying the weather on the flight path in solid colors as shown here, and weather outside of the flight path displayed in a hash pattern as shown here. The pilot can also extract earth curvature corrected altitude slices from the buffer and display them. Here we have the same storm cell with slices extracted at 12,000 feet and 22,000 feet. This analysis mode provides a simple means for making deviation decisions. In addition to horizontal slices, we can also extract vertical slices from the buffer showing a vertical profile of weather along the aircraft's track, along the selected azimuth, or my favorite, weather along the flight plan. Here we have a dogleg flight plan, but the vertical view at the bottom shows the weather ahead as if it were a straight path. So now, let's take a peek into the 3D volumetric buffer. This is the two-dimensional plan view radar display that you normally see. But this is what's inside the 3D volumetric buffer that makes up that display. This is a snapshot in time from an actual flight. We collect and store everything, providing live, continuously updated information. This 3D volumetric scan is more robust for handling varying geographic conditions and detecting hazards close to the aircraft. 
The returns are classified as weather or ground. So we can remove the ground returns just leaving the weather or remove the weather just leaving the ground map. Let's peel the layers of these cells away like the layers of an onion. Removing green leaves yellow and red reflectivity along with turbulence information. Removing yellow shows the highest reflectivity red and turbulent areas. Removing the red leaves only the turbulence information. The turbulence threshold is set for moderate turbulence, but the actual values are stored in the buffer so we can set the threshold for lower turbulence values or increase the threshold to show stronger turbulence. You can see here we are heading very close to an area of strong turbulence. You can't peel away the layers like this, but you still have some very powerful tools available for making deviation decisions. Let's put all the colors back so we can look at constant altitude slices. These have been corrected for the Earth's curvature and that's why we call them constant altitude slices. Looking at the 3D view, we can see three areas with higher tops. This mode provides an easy analysis mode for making deviation decisions, allowing you to look at cell heights and how much moisture is carried aloft. We start out at our current aircraft altitude of 21,000 feet. Going up, we see that most of the reflectivity is gone by 30,000 feet, and we're left with three taller cells. The first one disappears by 34,000 feet, the second by 42,000 feet, and the third by 46,000 feet. On some installations, you can turn turbulence on and off while looking at altitude slices, providing more information for your analysis. Now we'll go back to the 3D view for just a moment before looking at a vertical view. We have a tall cell off to the right of the aircraft. In the plan view, you can see there is some lower altitude intervening weather as well. Looking at a vertical slice along a selected azimuth makes it very easy to see the height of the cell and how much moisture is carried aloft. As we saw from the altitude slices, this cell is carrying yellow reflectivity up to 45,000 feet. You may have noticed that the buffer is actually larger than the displayed area and even goes behind the aircraft. This is very handy. Anytime you are maneuvering around, either on the ground while taxiing or maneuvering in the terminal area on a star or an approach, the system is collecting data. So when you make a turn, the system already has data and can display it immediately. Older data behind the aircraft that is no longer being updated times out and gets removed from the buffer. Another thing you can see is the amount of data we have in the 3D buffer that we can analyze to detect wind shear, attenuation, cell tops and trends, and to predict hail and lightning. The buffer also provides independent pilot and co-pilot selections of range, mode, gain, altitude slices, and vertical slices because the pilot is not controlling the radar with the control panel, but using it to select the desired information from the 3D buffer. In future Flight Technical Services Quick Topic videos, we'll look at using the system to analyze weather and make deviation decisions.